Welcome back to Powertech TV. This is our third take on this, but the bloody phone keeps ringing. But today I've got something exciting for you. We're talking about none other than my favourite vehicle, the Tesla Cybertruck that doesn't exist in this point of time yet. There are 300 to 400 allegedly built currently, but if you're watching this before the 30th of November 2023, no one knows what the specifications are. Of course, I love it because a lot of people hate it, but also if you look at the over 1 million pre-orders, a lot of people love it too. Mainly, I like posting stuff about this car because it stirs up the petrosexuals and the people out there that like to dine at the nasal canal rather than appreciate good automotive engineering. So if you're watching this and you're getting triggered, sucked in. That's what I'm here for. Okay, the Tesla Cybertruck, it will be released, it will be rolled out at Giga Austin. We know some things about it already because uh, Elon had had a few scotches and a cigar by the looks of it on Joe Rogan's podcast and he let loose some of the details. Now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and we're going to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. For a start, the two variants that will be offered, I believe originally... There will be two variants. There'll be a dual motor and a tri-motor option. Um, the tri-motor option will be the first one to be released because that will be the fastest of them. And that will use the existing powertrain out of the Model S and Model X Plaid. Same powertrain to a large degree that they use in the Semi. You know, so it's quite an adaptable powertrain. So that will be 1,020 horsepower rated. I mean, who doesn't need a stainless steel bulletproof pickup that has 1,000 horsepower? That would just make sense to put the already designed and proven carbon rotor wrapped plaid powertrain in. So that's what you're getting. Battery sizes, I believe there'll be a 4680 based pack, which means it uses LFP technology. I don't know how they're going to get it to discharge at the high performance rates that they need to sustain 1,020 horsepower. But look, honestly, my battery engineering skill goes down to, you know, throwing double A's in the fire when they were flat as a kid. So I'm sure the Tesla uh, engineers have got that one under control. So I reckon it will be 120 kilowatt hour, the pack, right? People are gonna say, but it's gonna have no range. I can't hook up six semi trailers to the back and go across the nullable without having to stop 50 times. Of course, even see if my computer agreed with me. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think because the vehicle is light, much, much lighter than any other EV unit out there uh, of the similar sort of F150, 250, it's F250 sized. Um, the reason I know it's light is because uh, Elon said to Rogan, um, uh, between uh, 600 and, mm, and uh, 6,000 and um, 7,000 pounds, which is about 3,500 kilograms it's going to weigh in at, which puts it at F. 250 weight, not 4,500 kilograms like the Hummer EV, which is just a total overkill, uh, just pointless vehicle, really, unless you happen to be a rapper or a YouTuber like me. Um, that uh, that thing weighs 4,500 kilograms, the, the Hummer. It's just total joke. And that's why it's got a massive battery pack. And that's why it uses a massive amount of energy photons to move around or electrons uh, so the lighter you make it the smaller you can make the battery and or the further you can go so this is what tesla have always been very good at over the years is squeezing the lemon wringing the neck of the battery to get the most efficiency out of it and most kilometers per kilowatt hour so i believe there will be some surprises there i believe that the standard uh, triple motor tri-motor edition will have uh 650 to 700 kilometers range unloaded and loaded at probably three and a half thousand kilograms hanging off the back of it or four thousand kilograms it'll probably do 300 kilometers around there if you look at the semis weight and how that will do 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour or something stupid like that like huge if they use some of that same technology in Cybertruck, it should give it better towing range than anything else out there in the BEV battery electric segment. Performance. Um, it's already been said that it will come with the forget ludicrous mode, forget plaid mode. It's going to have beast mode. 
and uh, it's supposed to, in beast mode setting, which no doubt will have some sort of launch control and battery preheating like the Plaid does with drag strip mode, you can expect 0 to 100 or 0 to 60 mile an hour in less than three seconds, whether that's going to be 2.9 or 2.5. I think it'll be closer to 2.9 because there's a lot of physics going on there through those big wheels and everything else. Still firing three and a half ton down the road at that sort of rate, which puts it online for a high 10 second quarter mile pass will be quite a thing. I'm sure it'll get to 88 mile an hour very quickly and be able to go back through time before it runs over Marty and the doc. Was that his name? Was he the doc or the prof, Gareth? The doc. Crazy hairdo. I could probably grow one like that if I grew it out. <laughs> no thanks. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. So these are my predictions. I'm either going to be very right or very wrong, but I know what Tesla like to do is use a lot of existing inventory parts. And when it's as good as the Plaid powertrain, why wouldn't you? The fact they've used it in their semi is a great indicator that they do like to mix and match. And the fact that the Plaid's got a Model 3 front motor out of the rear of a performance Model 3 shows that that mixing and matching will work. So front motor will be um, Model 3 performance rear, Rear motor will be Model 3 Plaid, oh sorry, Model S X Plaid rear. So they're my predictions. Either way, uh, it is bulletproof by the look of it if you shoot a 45 ACP round at it. And it's also Joe Rogan arrow proof, which is quite important if you happen to be having a few scotches or bourbons with um, Joe and order a pepperoni, no it wasn't, it was a pineapple and double anchovy pizza. Oh, just the thought of it makes me want to sneeze. Thanks for listening to range anxiety.